I'm no expert in horror films. I still haven't seen The Exorcist or Poltergeist, and maybe that's why I've kind of shied away from filming anything remotely scary. So this week, I thought we'd scratch the surface of watching and studying and recreating some scenes from horror films. This all started with a trip to London for Fright Fest, where I saw some great indie horror films, as well as having my first experience watching a short film with binaural or 3D sound. Final Stop, which was written and directed by Roxanne Benjamin, essentially gives you the ears of a character who is being followed on her journey home. Initially, it felt odd putting headphones on in the cinema, but it didn't take long before I was seeing the benefits. It feels like a much more kind of personal experience. And there was one point where I heard a sound right behind my neck and you could, you could really almost feel it. The film was shot on an iPhone with sound from Sennheiser's Ambio headset, which is what funded Final Stop and also is the sponsor of this week's episode. Essentially, among other things, it allows you to really simply record this binaural 3D sound by just plugging it into your iPhone and the Android version is coming soon. After watching Final Stop, I got to chat to Mirek from Abbey Road Studios. So he's pretty dedicated to sound. So I wanted to ask him what he thinks the sound and audio brings to a film. It really helps the brain fuse kind of the images it's seeing, right? It's kind of like, um, it brings it all together. Um, I guess like the difference between good sound and bad sound is kind of the same as, or, or an analogy would be, say you're watching um, like a horror movie in broad daylight with your mates eating pizza. It's a completely different experience to watching that same horror movie on your own, lights out, you know, kind of in the dark sort of thing. Um, it kind of heightens the senses in different ways. And sound, it's just another way of heightening the senses and, and sort of immersing you in, in this experience. So if we're talking about an immersive experience for the senses, horror films are probably the best example of this. Evidently, our physical reaction when watching a scary scene is much like riding a roller coaster. Adrenaline is released, we have sweaty palms, tense muscles, a drop in skin temperature, a spike in blood pressure, and an increased heart rate. In very rare cases, these effects have been known to trigger a heart attack. So it's clear that the cinema experience can really be very powerful. And yet a bad film can have literally no effect on us physically or emotionally whatsoever. So I wanted to kind of see what this difference is and try and find out as much as I can by watching a bunch of horror films. I noticed some recurring themes. Often a young child or a small doll can be far scarier than a huge monster. I guess it creates a dissonance between something we expect to be innocent that then turns out something that we should fear. Often there are religious symbols and imagery, which makes sense as religion is kind of our primary cultural connection to both the afterlife and the supernatural. So maybe that makes it a little bit more real and kind of believable if you say compare it to like a, a scary film about aliens. And then of course the big one is death, something we all have indirect experience with, but none of us have experienced firsthand. And so a film that had all of those characteristics was Hereditary, which I have to say is one of my favourite films of the year. So I decided to recreate the first scene that I really felt in my chest, the first scene that really got me. I took a bunch of frames from the film, put them on my phone, and then we set about matching the framing and lighting as closely as possible to see what we could learn from it. Using the available light on location gave us the warm highlights. We just had to put some marks on the ground so our actor Zoe could stand in exactly the right place for the light. In the original, it is dark, but not enough to stop us from seeing her face expression. So to recreate that kind of moonlit fill light, I set up an Aperture 120D with batteries just for the convenience of it and bounced it off the ceiling. The light is daylight balanced, so after dialing in the brightness with the dimmer, we have this nice subtle colour contrast that's motivated by the blue moonlight coming through a window. Here's how the sequence turned out.
Now watching that short sequence in this context without all of the build up from the film, I'm guessing it didn't give you such a strong reaction. In the film, of course, we hear about the recent passing of the character's mother, who is the figure we see in the darkness. And in general, there's plenty of time to crank up the anticipation and to get us kind of immersed into the story and relating to the characters. But for me, at least, it's still valuable to dissect a scene like this, figuring out how to match the lighting as closely as possible and seeing where the editor decided to place the cuts. But above all, the moment that occurred in most of the horror films I watched was a scene of a character investigating. Either the camera slowly moves around a room while your eyes dart around to see what's in the corners, or there'll be a character hear something and then they'll slowly walk around looking for an explanation. So I found one of these shots and to recreate it I set up my slider on a chair and a light stand and then I bounced the 120D off the ceiling just through the door. So the light is in front of the character and falls towards us. We get those shadows facing the camera. I then just cooled off the white balance on the camera for that nighttime look, and there we have it. The biggest takeaway for me here was that even if you can match the light pretty closely, it's not going to feel the same if the set design doesn't match. Like here the floor is not nearly as smooth and reflective. Overall though, it was still fun to experiment with cinematography and see the kind of choices that they made with Hereditary. It reminded me of something that Roxanne, the director, said about using this headset to put the audience inside the head of one of the characters. Like, do you want to feel like you're in the head of that person or not? Do you want to feel like you're in the head of like someone else in the scene? You know, it's kind of, it's really interesting because it makes you identify with a specific person, I think, in a different way. Uh, it would be really cool to see something that's like multi-character with this tech and see how someone works that out. For me, the world of horror films is kind of a new thing for me to experiment with much like this whole 3D binaural sound is definitely going to be a new thing. At the very least, it's going to be hugely influential with the VR filmmaking and gaming world. So I've put a link in the description to Roxanne's short so you can hear the binaural effect. And you don't need to have lots of speakers like with surround. It literally works with any headphones. I've also put a link to the Ambio headset that they recorded with because without Sennheiser sparking the interest in horror films for me, I might have avoided them for a lot longer and now I feel like I've just started to learn about this really important branch of the filmmaking tree. See you next time.